right. Welcome everyone to Dardashat in Aramaic means local chat or a talk show with our two leaders and friends from all over the world. And today we have a very special tour leader with us, and I would love for her to introduce her to all of us. So tell us more about yourself and where are you from, Norby? Good morning, Andre, here in Texas. I am Norby Mayfield. Uh, I am a Mayan Indian from the jungles of Honduras. And let me just start with this, the thought so we can tell them and grab our audiences. What good can he come out of there? Right? That's what he said about when Jesus was born in the little town. And so it's like, what good can he come out of the jungles of Honduras? Well, God has something there and I didn't even know. Now think about this. This is a girl in the middle of nowhere in the jungles of Honduras, agriculture. Our daily living was uh, raising pineapples, mangoes, and that's what we did. Now, here it come to possess people to the middle of nowhere in the jungles. We now call them missionaries, right? For the gospel. Wow. So they come over there and they don't speak the language. They don't know anything. They're white. First time I saw blonde hair, all right? You can see dark hair here. <laughs> and so and dark, uh, blonde hair and blue eyes. So they were the ones who first introduced me by example. They was These people was possessed, okay? They came and live in a thatched roof home, dirt, mud, little walls. And I would pick on them. They were always studying a book there. I didn't know what that book was, but the, that was an example of Christianity. And they were the first warriors that came and claimed that ground for Christ. It was until three, three years later, when I was 11 years old, that I became a Christian. I was the only Christian in my family not only I was the only one that came to know Christ as my savior all over the jungle, but my father was my worst persecutor. From head to toe, he will beat me up, if I may say that, because I will go to church. My church was underneath a mango tree. Wow. So I want you to kind of get this picture. Barefooted Mayan girl uh, fighting monkeys because I was washing the clothes by the river and they'll take it over there, the canopy of the trees, five stories high. So, but I didn't know my assignment for life. And then uh, I had a wonderful, beautiful lady that prayed for me and was the one who told me. Nobody cared for her because she was a little deformed in her face and thought, that, I don't know, society thought that that was uh, something that needed to be discarded. But she's the one who told me, says, Norby, if it's God's will for you to marry, you need to be praying for that husband. So I did. And I prayed for my husband in details. Well, there he is. He, uh, I always said, bring it from far away. I don't, you know, far, 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 far away. And he did. Um, I met my husband. Five days later, we married. And then a month later, we were in Spain. We traveled because of his work, sent him to play different parts of the world. And so for traveling that, by the end of 22, I think, or 23 years old, I came to the United States after being in Spain, Morocco, which I love the Arab countries, Costa Rica, Honduras, and it came back. And then I became an American citizen about 28. But my call, and that's the important part of it is, I, let me go back to that. In those years prior to knowing my husband, I had missionaries that came. And I saw my people that came to know Jesus Christ as their savior um, being taken back to all this either witchcraft or whatever else, superstition, whatever else it was. So, but there was nobody that would stand to train and to disciple the people, the local people. So I would tell the missionaries, can you teach me? Can you train me? You see, it was God's design that I had to go through that experience to understand why local leaders felt feel nowadays they felt like me am I not intelligent and I'm not worth it um you don't think that I'm capable 
Or in my case, it was because my society that I come from, the value of a woman, my father used to tell me, the value of a woman, uh, dirt is more precious than a woman. You know why? Because at least we can put plants and produce and give fruit. That's what I remember him saying. So God changed your life from a maid of a jungle from nowhere because of these missionaries and moved you from that place and put your heart to travel all over and settle in USA. And your testimony is powerful. So tell us how that on your heart, because you've been missionary also, because you were called by missionaries and your heart is like a missionary. So what mission things you do today? Well, for the last 45 years, I have started my, my own nonprofit. And that's what got it started with, uh, deeply engaging in mission. Not that I wasn't doing it. I was doing mission work all the time. And my call is, first of all, I think it's important to tell you about my call. My call is to empower local leaders in order to grow the gospel in a healthy, productive, christ center mm. process. Why do I say that? Is because if something I learned from the mission field, being a pro pro fruit and product of the mission field and going through all of those years through having missionaries going in and out is that they come in and out, but we are there permanent. The other thing I understood was I knew my people. Mm. I know how they think when they go to sleep, why they do what they do, how they process things, which is important. How do they process that? And I remember many times I was translated to the uh, from the missionaries to my people. How can they explain something? Because what they were saying, it just didn't make sense. Not even to me. But then when I, they explained it to me and they took the time. That's the important part. So I started a nonprofit wanting to do that. Wanting to go find. I didn't want to go uh, to all these great leaders in the different nations. I wanted God to do what he did with me. Go to the unknown, the forgotten ones. To a local level. At, at, but at a serious, on. serious local level. I see that. I buried. See that. Those that are buried within society, buried between everything over there. The and unknown, I said, God, those. Who people do not know about. So you're reaching people groups that even exactly. locals, because... You've done lately a mission trip to Israel. Can you tell us about it and how you met with the locals? Exactly like what you're saying. The what? ones that the unforgotten Christians you reached when your trip was here. Exactly like how called you. With that calling and through all of these years after nonprofit and everything, God has bestowed upon me some of his riches. So I decided, why can I not be like those New York Stock Exchange Christian investments for eternity? The greatest investor is the one who invests, okay, with exponential growth. So I thought, here we go. I know I get key leaders from the United States, Netherlands, and Mexico that I know. Those key leaders that can invest in God's kingdom. But in order to get there, I had to go back 12 years ago when I first got put that, that, that desired mission to go to Israel. And then I had to decide, how am I gonna get there? How do I find it? I start asking people around here and who do you know over there in the mission world? I start connecting. But you know what? They really just took me to this and I'm like, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I want to go to understand how can we empower those local leaders. But anyway, they always told me, Norby, you're just weird and possessed. And I said, okay, that's fine. But I had to join a tour group. And guess what? Guess who was leading the tour group? Twin Yay, tours. I know. Twin my... tours. And I'm like, yes. Oh, yes. And so I remember emailing directly to Tony. Uh, you know, the, the, the organizer she in the United States because he was a Christian tour group, just 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 the general. She said, 
we don't do this, but I'm going to let you email him. Let me get permission for New York and see if they do. They did and everything. And I said, okay, I emailed Tony and I said, look, I'm joining this group for one purpose. I'm looking for God's people. And then I'm going to go see all the sites that Jesus walked. Because every Christian has that seal and desire. But my first goal is to find them. Then after eight days of being with Tony and listening to him and trying to get to know him, the man had discernment to know, okay, this woman is for real. And he decided to obey God and said, you know what? Let's talk about this. That's what developed a relationship of trust. Your culture is like our culture in Latin America. We're warm, relational, one-on-one. -on -one. We do business eye-to-eye -eye and handshake, right? Yes. Let's talk it like we're doing right now. So for probably from then six years up to now, we developed a trip that was customized for these key influential leaders. See, I was looking for American, Mexican, and Netherlands influential leaders that can make a difference. But not only in Israel, uh, flesh and blood, eternally, mm. to plug eternally. And so I, God gave them to me. So I remember you and Marie were in the States and all of a sudden, uh, I, I just got you know crazy like always, possessed like my friends say. And I said, can you come and spend a weekend with me? And I gave you the vision. I want to tailor make this, but I want to go find those. But this time we have been communicating with Tony. He had put me in contact with a lot of different individuals, Christian individuals over there. They knew those that were hidden between the, the walks, the streets, the daily business, and where that nobody. So before I continue on, in that first trip, I will never forget. I had a Christian that made this statement. He said, and that changed me and gave me a power just like. It was one of the other things that propelled me, you know, another propeller. He said, Miss Norby, Christians come by the truckloads and the canful like sardines packing those planes. Right. And on our alleyways and walkways, we bump each other, but they never touch us. Never meets. You know what God's people were saying there? When Jesus healed, what did he do? He said he touched the people. Touch in that sense means you release power. You're embracing somebody. You bring in that sentiment of wholeness that you're mine. Changing his life. Yep. Yes. Guess what? Those That hurt me because it spoke of me. It's like, is that the reason that I want to go? Just go bump them and hit them on the shoulder, on the side? Or do I really want to embrace them and tell them, you're not forgotten, you're loved. If nothing else, I'm just here to hug you for a little time. Sometimes people, that's all they need. I just want they to tell you, I agree completely. Many groups come to Israel, to the Holy Land, and they just see the stones and the sites and they leave and they never interact with the local or hug a local or talk with a local or invest or encourage even a local. But you know what, Andrew? The biggest fulfillment of me is when you sit with them. You learn and from see what makes them like 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 the American people say here. What makes them tick? You know, and then when you start finding those things, that little treasure, you start feeling more comfortable. It's like, wow. And here is what we miss when we go, just because we're going to see the sights. When you go back and embrace those people, go deep into the middle of nowhere, where? And look how they live. You are transported in Jesus' time, and now you're in the real movie and understanding what the gospel says about, well, they went down the hill and they were healed and all of this stuff. And this happened and then the drinks. And, and you know, the Bible also speaks about the jars, the tear jars. You get to see. 
it truly, now you become a player engaging in all your senses, all right, inside of this movie. Yes. So I had experience your team, Barnabas team, doing exactly what you're talking about. The effect that you had made on the country and on the locals, the ripple effect is eternal, exactly like what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. So this is very deep that a small team had affected so many people in the land here. Can you tell us what was the effect of the trip on the team members? Well, let me tell you. I will tell you one of them, and, and this is the description of all, but this one describes it best. Jay, uh, he said, Norby, I have come to the land six or seven times. I have stayed in the best hotels. I've done all of this. I have seen sites. I have gone with the best, the best, this, that, the other. But sister, I will, I have for ever been changed on this trip. I have tasted and drank. I have fellowship. I have been. I have seen Jesus. The man was so changed and transformed. Now we're talking a, a, a founder and CEO of a serious, serious multi-million dollar ministry. <laughs> and he's like, I just can't believe it. Every day was like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't understand it. I'm seeing the Holy Land in a new perspective, in a new light. Why was I not part of this? Because it's a deeper perspective. You got him. <laughs> like God used you all the way from Honduras, all the way from the jungles. Because as a local, you know how it's a sacrifice to go out of your comfort zone. And you, the missionaries, went out of their comfort zone. And now you are doing the same thing. You're going out of your comfort zone to do a mission trip in Israel and meet with the key leaders and the locals. And their in, lives is like... Their lives. But you see, you see, Andre, here's one key. Troops come and go to the battlefield. Okay, we're not there permanent in the battlefield. But then God used an special troop and said, you need to go replenish the front lines with what they need and you just need to obey. That's why I love one of the trainings that Pastor Mark have always said to us every time we met. You need to ask the question, what do you not want from us? Mm. And what do you need? We did that prior the going. We plan, it took, remember, Andre, it took us, all, well, now it's almost three years, almost three year time to prepare. Tony prepared some well, highly educated, well seasoned webinars in which they, he first prepare and understand culture, context, history, everything holistically. The point here, it was, it was a holistic training for my team. Second of all, you and, and, and Tony and Cetrac and the whole Twin Tours team decided that we now are going to engage with the local pastors. And we went through that phase of getting to know each other, whatever. So by the time we got to the Holy Land, we were ready to go. We're not only, we're not strangers anymore. We build a relationship. We build this, that it needed to be done. So we didn't waste time, days, and trying to get to know it, da, 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 and the mindset. No, we build it. But the most important key element here was what? We had twin tours to highly educate us and walk us in understanding. And we needed to be obedient to learn. Once we did that, we passed that phase, we were able to do that which God calls us to do by replenishing the front lines. To me, those in Israel right now in the Holy Land 
are the frontline troops that are in the battle. Right there, right now, is hot and heavy. And the key, Norway, is that you connected with the indigenous locals. Thank you. Yes. That is a key. Yes. Because when the more you work and prepare for a tour, especially a mission group, before they come, and we spent even like years, like three years in preparations for this trip, the yes. more you prepare in advance, the more it has been effective and ripple effects till today. Even Jay came back again, right? And he ministered. Yes, exactly. And that's what I was going to. You read my mind. This is good. He was so touched and moved. He said, Norby, it's, um, it's almost as if I just became a Christian again. That seal and that passion. Do you know what he told me? I got to get back to Israel. So it, before anything else happened, you know, as crazy busy as, as Christmas time is, December, in your country, in our country. No, he started putting plans together. We got to go back. Blah, blah, blah. And guess what? He brought his training back to local leaders. He wanted to invest back again. And he says, do you know what he told me after he came back from uh, Israel in February? He said, Norby, I want to tell you this. I have chosen to make Israel my number one mission field of my ministry. I'm going back next time. I'm taking my, my wife and my daughter. Because that, they got to in love like I did. Because it was all genuine. It was all. Thank you. Plan. Yes. And God's connected it from the first, from the beginning with you, from everyone, even from first when you were called. And mm -hmm. till today, God had a plan to bring and increase the kingdom here. So, And that's what it is. And you know what, uh, Andre? I mean, I w when I was been um, going to churches, conferences, wherever they invite me to speak, I have told them, I said, I'm a being, a being a missionary for the North American because I'm a Baptist. Uh, I was uh, commissioned by the North American Mission Board to be a missionary. But I also started my own nonprofit. And I am now encouraged um, ministries and I have helped develop and do some consultant work to develop nonprofit Christian ministries in many, many, many different countries. Last year, I, I helped develop four. Now, all to say is, oh, I just went blank. Sorry, senior mommy, delete that part of it and we'll it's get okay. back to it. I will edit that, no worries. <laughs> uh, my, my, my point here is, is if we are obedient, one, in tune with God's calling, it requires for the Christian to understand what is my calling for my life and then engage. It's not just good to know it. You got to engage, put hands and heart and life into it. All right. Yeah. I started all of this. So in order to bring the gospel to local leaders, to empower them, I can't be with them 24 seven, Andrew. But if I empower them, they're going to continue the race. The best part of it, it is that they will experience the hands and feet of God or their his embrace to them because he sends somebody from far away to come and love on them. And to get when he when he gets so hot, when he gets so starving, where you are down in the pits, like they say here in the United States, to have a drink of water and somebody comes and say, You know, forgotten. Don't think that you we don't know about you. We do know about you. Right. The church in the West needs the church in the East and the church in the East need the church in the yes, West. Yes, right? we do. We do. We do. And that is so important. And if leaders now and day that will want, and I, to your audience, what I will say is, if there's any leader in that audience, let it be a pastor, let it be a local leader, a missionary director, whatever it might be, or just a layman that says, I want to put a, put a trip together. I will tell them immediately. The best thing you can do is go to Twin Tours. Why reinvent the wheel and try to do all kinds of research and history? They already have courses. They are holistic. 
you can eat out of them. Then you can, once you eat them and embrace them, go and present it to your group, teach them, prepare the way. Remember. Education. We need, don't, Andre, here's the important thing. We Christians forget. We just want to go, right? Guess what? Let us be more like God. What did God do? Before Jesus Christ was sent, he prepared the way. He announced that he's had John the Baptist. He prepared the way. Those uh, true leaders are the John the Baptist that are preparing the way. Then you put a banquet that God wants you to season and put it together and present it to your group. And don't forget, you're not ministry. See, the, that's the other mentality that we have. That we think, oh, we're going to minister to them. Meaning whoever you're going to. We know more. We know better. No, 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 no. Exactly. Remember, you're ministering holistic. You're discipling holistic. Everybody involved. That includes your team. Feed your team. If you feed your team, they will feed the people that God is sending them to. And those people will feed them too also. And there will be a channel like this of both meeting together. But it takes for you to feed your people. Prepare the way. So thank you for sharing this because this is an encouragement for other mission groups who want to come and you are saying to them, get more education, be prepared better. And the more they are prepared, the more God's kingdom will expand healthy. So I want to tell you that your small group was small in size, but the spiritual ripple effect and the things that happened, you met with most of the important key leaders in Israel, in Palestine, and in the West Bank. And when Amen. you left, probably you do not know that, everyone was saying how great was that team. I heard First so time. many people like sharing about how they were, you were coming to serve them. They said, we never felt that they had an agenda. We never felt that they want something from us. We only felt that they want to give and they poured into our hearts. And everyone, you put a very good reputation because throughout history, we are the locals. We are heard so much from missionaries. We are so much hurt because they come with their agenda and to take and honestly to tell you, take pictures, go back and then we never hear about them. But sure. when you came, it was totally different. I think because of your background, I think because you go deeper and you appreciate the culture, you appreciate people, you are an encourager for people. And this is in your personality too. So you, the true leader spirit prevails over the group. And this is what we've seen in encouragement spirit and people's lives has been touched and changed in both ways in a healthy, healthy environment. And, and that's what the point is. If you really are interested for his kingdom to come, then it's not about you taking pictures. It's not about you going back to the United States and we saw this and we saw that, or going back to Honduras or whatever country. Again, I want to tell those leaders that are listening to me, do what Dr. Mark Carpenter trained our team. And I told him, I said, that's exactly what I want because he put it in words. You go with the spirit of learning. Ask them, what do you not want from us? And what do you need from us? If you see yourself as a tool of God, that the blessings of God is going to flow and you're just going to carry them like a good soldier and take it to the front lines, you will experience heaven on earth. Because we drank what we drank of the sweetness over there in Israel and the Holy Land in Palestine and the Gaza Strip was so amazing. Like Jay said, the man is possessed. It is like, I never had this ever. Nobody in Israel. And I mean, he being with high leaders over there from government to different people. And he's like, 
Never have I experienced this. I want more of this. I want to go back. And he That's made now kingdom. his commitment. That's God's kingdom. Exactly. Do you know what my little prayer warrior that God gave me? He is in the Netherlands. She came from Peru, but God sent her with her husband to the Netherlands. Now, I have never seen a prayer warrior and a prayer and faster warrior like her. That woman prayed and fasted for our trip. Now, I can't do this. But she did. 40 days in prayer and fasting. She went back to the Netherlands. And when she found out that Jade is going back, nobody had to tell her that she was on back again. She now knows I'm part of the Barnabas team. One of ours is going there. I'm praying and fasting for everybody involved. And do you know what happened when we, we leaders first find the prayer and fasting prayer warriors in our groups? or in our churches, they are the troops that are going to neutralize the enemy from above, and they're going to do a specific targets. So we, the ground troop, can do what we were called to do. Exactly. And I want to thank you, Norvi, because Jerusalem is, is where history started, where history Amen. Jerusalem is a warfare, and mm -hmm. you, with your team, was well prepared as an army spiritually coming and supporting God's people here. So it's a warfare and you took yes, it, it seriously. Is. Everyone in the team took it seriously. Yes, it and, is. and I tell you, I would pray for more groups come like this because it builds up group but, after but, group spiritually. Andre, I will add one more thing. Okay. What you those who are listening to us said, okay, but you're talking about a minister, a missionary, a leader, all this stuff. What about somebody that was a leader? They want a mixture on the in the trip. Well, I would tell them, I did that. In my third trip, I team up. That's when we start the baby step. I team up with twin tours. And we did a, a serious combination of both. And it wasn't a full engagement, but we wanted to love on the local leaders. And we had some women's conference and men's conferences. You see, it can be done. We had the whole team over there is like, well, then again, you know, you and you and Tony are so seasoned. You engage us with all our senses. We get that experience of it comes alive. Let's put it. The, the rocks can talk to us. Let's put it that way. So we're, we, uh, my team that went that time, okay, from different walks of life, they were like, this is amazing. And yet we still touch some of the people here. How did you put it all together? It can be done. You don't have to do it at the level that I just did. I mean, a truly deep engagement, deep into the ocean. But you can come a middle way and still feel it, it, it's powerful because you did all the sites. And yet we touched the people. We ate with them. Now, you see, it's a different thing when you just touch a person, you know, just high and handshake. But when you sit, when you ate, when you fellowship, it, there's something happened to all of us. And that's what happened to us on the third trip. I had team members then that said, okay, we got to do something else. We got to go. And I said, but this was just a Christian tour group. This is what's all, that's what is all us at Christian Tour Group. We're not doing anything really discipleship. We're not deep engagement like we just did in the last month. Nevertheless, they said, this is the way I should have been for my trips. I had a lady that had gone to with this group. And actually, Tony was um, in about two or three of her uh, trips, the tour guide. She said, uh-uh, it can be. Here's the difference. The difference was that I engaged with a ministry directly, with twin tours directly, and I spoke with them. And you have you have the professionalism to understand and listen and start shaping it up. Beautiful. The other the other entities that I dealt with, the other tour groups, the other tour companies that I dealt with, they just said we're going to go and do a Christian tour group. To them, it just means to the sites and we'll tell you history. 
Even they will give Bible verses and references of the scriptures, but not at the level that we did on my third one and the fourth one. You see, and that's what they said. This is what we want. By the time we did the fourth one, all these leaders, I say, let us lose. And I told them, I said, you know what? I never intended for you to go through me to get to anywhere. Go. All I wanted to do is bring this intersection of the West and the East leaders. Like a palm tree, throw grow branches and flourish. And they will become the health and the food that all peoples will come under their wings and under their branches so they can eat, they have shade, and they be embraced. That's, that's what you all help me create. Yeah, it's a teamwork, actually. It's it truly really is. Yes. So I want for the people who are hearing this podcast or also on YouTube or Facebook or on Zoom, just get involved get involved when you come to israel not only to visit the sites ask us visit the locals see the churches talk to a local invite a local to come and meet with you because it will transform not only his life your life because you connecting with the believers with the living stones out of all of this interview i want to tell you all Coming to the Holy Land is amazing. It's a great experience. But yes. if you don't see the locals, the believers, the living stones, you are missing a lot in your lives. And, it and will you know perfect what I mean? the tour. It will make it complete when there are believers involved with you. You know what I will say to that, Andre? You will miss the heart. We're only going to see the mind. Because with the mind, we process all this knowledge of history and all this knowledge that is written in the scripture of history. But if you don't touch the peoples, then guess what? You just miss the heart. And we need both to be complete. Yes. We yes. Mind we do. Together. We the do. West, the West is like the mind. The heart is like the East. And when you put them together... It yes. becomes complete. You can see God's plan on earth for Jerusalem, Israel, and all over the world. Yes, and you know what? If I'm speaking to the Christians right now, um, churches of any denomination, Christian churches that want to go, I will say, please educate yourself about the state of Christianity or of our born-again believers in, in Israel. And then you will understand why I say that Israel is the most neglected country in the mission field for all evangelicals. We all have failed. Now, if somebody wants to tell me how bold that you say that, I said, well, I speak for experience. And if you wanted to talk to me, I'll be glad to visit with you about it. But I, you, I don't have to speak. All you have to do is go to Twin Tours Academy, listen to all the statistics, listen to all the studies they have done then prove to yourself and ask God, what is the measure of what you are calling me to engage in the Holy Land? Because the Bible says, Paul said, everybody will give at their own measure that he has been called by God. Yeah, and to confirm, is, what is my measure? to confirm what you're talking, I've been in so many churches in USA and they send mission groups all over the world to Mexico, Guatemala every year and they don't send mission groups to Israel. I said to the pastors, why you don't come to Israel? They say it's not safe. I said like, you go to much more dangerous areas and I can see yes. all your mission, 24 mission groups in a year and there is no Israel here despite where mission started in Israel. So they said to me, they never thought about it. So I think their eyes is like, it's a spiritual battleground. They, yes, yes. Their eyes need to be opened to know that yes. Yes. Israel needs people to come, or especially nowadays. Listen, for those who are at end time theologians, okay, scatology, guess what? If we are truly are looking at the signs that everything is lining up, then guess what? Israel needs to know Christ. Here is my story. 
why did I decide that I was going to go now and invest is because Tony stopped me on my track as I was coming out of the bus. And he says, do you know how many Christians are left in Bethlehem? You know what raised in my head, Andre? All these thoughts in a matter of seconds, like God saying to me, where was Christ born? Bethlehem. Where does the gospel became flesh? Bethlehem. Are you going to let the light of Christ not be fade away in Bethlehem? And when that question was posed to me on my brain in a matter of seconds, then Tony says to me, you can count them with the, your fingers in your hand. Because he was making a comparison of the millions of people. That shocked me. But God needed to shock me. And guess what? Of course, being an agriculture girl, a ranching girl that I am, I said, uh-uh. You know, like a good Hispanic girl just kind of gave attitude. I said, uh-uh, no way. Not on my watch, not on my turn. That's when I remember... Many times God has put a stone marks in my life. And I want, I want people to hear this uh, because I think that Bobby Mason he speaks it so well because that's the song that always God gave me because that's exactly the sentiment that I made. And I challenge, I challenge all those leaders and all this audience that is listening to me that want to go to the Holy Land. I will be the one, God. That's what I told him. I'll be the one. Now, you see, from persecutors in my country, my father, the number one says, what good king came out of you? For all society that told me all of that, from the people in Bethlehem, what good can he come out of it? What good can he come out from this little town in the middle of the way in Nebraska or in Texas or this? Well, guess what? You are a son and a daughter of God. And he's just waiting for you to say, I will be the one. Who will be the first to lead the way? I'll be the one. Who will stand in the gap and watch and pray? I'll be the one. If I can't go, I'll be the one that do that. That might be the measure that God is calling you. Who will walk with his brother in unity? Brother, Andre, you're my brother. You know how I walk with you. I said, I'll be the one, God. Now, many people said, how can a woman build a relationship? with another man that's not her husband. Well, guess what? He's my brother in Christ. He's in the family of Christ. I really, really feel like, like a flesh and blood brother. So he, I will walk in unity with him, okay? I will walk in unity with him and I will say, I'll be the one that will develop something with him. And guess what? God gave me two twins and we developed this awesome, heavenly experience that everybody that went i will say it like my youth like my youth in gonzalez when i was the youth minister in gonzalez said miss mayfield you are one possessed woman and my answer was yes with the holy spirit amen Guess i what? love this i love that. my team came so possessed with the holy spirit after being in the holy land they were bursting they were like a furnace that if they didn't do something, they were going to die because this was going to explode inside of them. It's like the days of the early church where the disciples <laughs> went. Yes. So I want to thank you so much, Norvi, for all of this insight and all of this zeal that is <laughs> contagious. That is like the Holy Spirit effect. We need more people like this. We need more tour leaders like this. We need people that just... I know how much sacrifices you have done just to come to the land. You left everything, all the responsibilities, your family, your husband, just to come here. You paid a big price, but it was worth it. I want to tell you, we need to mature like this. We need to be grown up yes. and go out of our comfort zones, not to stay in like in a comfortable area. When you go out of your comfort zone, the Holy Spirit is like the kingdom of heavens will explode. There is power there when you go out of your comfort zone. There is like when the kingdom expands, there is the power of the spirit that Jesus was Amen. talking about. Because people, what you have done also, moving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light by breaking. 
all these battles. I remember how many battles, how many attacks you had. I oh remember. my goodness, that two and a half years from pandemic. To... <laughs> I mean, honestly, canceling trip. We can't go this because this and we require it. It was a roller coaster of stuff. Yes, and yeah, on but... top of that, now when you are really keen obedience to God, prepare for the battle. That's what I will tell those leaders, prepare for the battle, because we did. I mean, my team was like, I had two, well, three, including me. All of a sudden, the attack on either my husband's health or the health of one of the team members. And then, but I have one that says, I don't care. You never give up. I, I remember that. sick in that case. He I goes, remember. I got to go because I got to go sick, but I got to go. <laughs> and then, you know what? The doctor the doctor gave him all this prescription, told him, he said, well, we'll send you with this and this and that, and we boost you with this, this and that. And when you come back, we'll finish up doing whatever we're going to do, clean up or whatever, and uh, take all that infection, whatever it is. But in the meantime, you're not contagious because he was something with his, his teeth. But he was pretty bad. And he's like, but I'm going. And he did. And he did. And he is one of the many of the nine member team that went that is so silly and possessed to go back and make that. Wow. But it's you know what? what he says? It's not for me to go. It's for me to engage with the local leaders. I can do it from here. I don't have to be there. One of the things that we learned, Andre, too, in my team, and I knew this, is that when when a group goes and gets into that intensity like that, they tend to say, well, I can just come and live here and I can just support them here. No, no, your place. Get back to the United States. Get back to work. Go tell people. Go educate them over there. Wow. Go spread the word. From here, we can build all the supplies so we can replenish the front lines. But a, a leader needs to help do the re-entry and redirect all this passion, all this seal in the way it should go. See? And that's the other part that you all have helped us, Andre and Tony, is shape it up and redirect us. Give us a re-entry in which we digest all that food that we engage while it was in the Holy Land. And why we were so able to teach you this because you are flexible you were want to learn you you are hungry tell us more and tell us more and you were just opened and usually that doesn't happen the westerners when they come norvi in general they want to do their agenda they want to do what they want to do they have a plan but, abc and do it but, with but you, Andrew, this is what we have in this chat because we want to converse with our audience right here. And this is what we have in our chat to tell our brothers. I said, you know, we, let's talk about difficult issues that we have fell on the cracks when we do mission work. But now that we have brought them afloat, you know, let's 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 make the adjustments to clean ourselves up a little bit more, to shape it up. No, oh, with the anointing because, and the spirit. Yeah, anoint me, because guess what, Andre? God is in the process of refining us and refining our processes. All of us. It doesn't that we be, it, it doesn't mean that we're being wrong the way we did in the past. But guess what? You can come out to a higher excellence. Let's shape it up a little bit better. Let's keep on moving and improving. And you see. That is what God loves, this strife. Let's strive to bring that excellency. And now that we brought these issues afloat, you and I, then we can tell our brothers here on the West, hey, look, can we shape it this way? Can you open up to listen to us? Uh, if you don't want a one-on-one face-to-face, let me first engage you with Tour of Dreams Academy. Look at these seminars. Look at these things that we're presenting. And then if you want a consultant work, because basically that's what you did with me. Yes. Tony Tony, and you have spent, and Marie has spent countless of hours but through Zoom in a personal visit doing the consulting work, because that's what it is, it's consulting work. And once we developed that relationship consulting, we were able to put something that it was heaven's appointment, heaven's appointment. Great. And thank you so much, Norvi, for sharing your heart and for sharing with us I about all your history, your story, and the mission groups you're coming here. And we 
are praying for this thing to continue with us as yeah. and continue our good brother relationship and I'm so excited to see how the kingdom of heaven will expand more because it's it's like for long term and we've been connecting for like and we will continue to connect so that's amazing what God started and, and that's what I said Andre we are heavily heavenly investors Amen. So we got to invest for eternity. We have the blood of Christ, so we have to invest better than the New York Stark uh, people. <laughs> We're doing investment for heaven. So Yes, thank you for all your time and you're investing your time today. And uh, thank you for like what you have done for Twin Stores and for the Academy and being part of our like uh, really real brothers and sisters real encourager that when we were down you were helping us and supporting us and blessing us and standing with us so now everything is flourishing and now everything is great and we are just enjoying and reaping what people had poured into our lives and twin stores academy that was hard for us at one stage but we were able to do this academy when there was no work, me and Tony invested hours and hours in touring around and doing seminars and teachings about mission groups, about the Christians, trying to educate the West about the Holy Land. So if anyone is hearing this podcast, just go to www.twinstours.com slash academy, and you have more than 10 courses to learn about how to become a better Christian, just how to become like Jesus. This is what's our focus, is to educate mm -hmm. people about the land and how to be like Jesus Christ. Thank you, Norvi, for being a big... My pleasure, because I have reaped the blessing for getting to know you. And I praise God that he appointed to all of us, to your audience and you and me, to be together at this point in time in life. He had a purpose and a reason. So we praise him for that. So I have grown because I've been around you all. So thank you so much for growing me in Christ. Amen. And I thank you for the audience for listening to me. <laughs> thank you all. I feel the anointing. I feel the Holy Spirit on this teaching and this sharing. It's amazing, amazing how, God's, how God works when we don't plan it, when we go with the flow because we want to expand his kingdom. So my heart rejoices. I'm encouraged today. I'm so much encouraged because the spirit is encouraging us as Amen. brothers and sisters. Me too. We're standing with each others. So we need churches to stand with people in Israel. All I will end with this. All Israel have to be saved. We need yes. you in the West yes. churches to come to the land and meet with people and pray with people because they need Jesus. And that's the only solution to the conflict in this part of the world. And, and, and Andre, if you allow me one, one last thing to say, I will expand on your word. Because you see, uh, for here, the understanding of the word of Israel is just one. But I want to make sure that we are more pinpointing in detail. I'm glad you're talking. The about mainland of Israel, Palestine, that we call it the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, you know, the Holy Land as a whole is a bigger place and it's full of ethnic groups and it's seasoned with so much. So let us go get the peoples in the Holy Land. I wanna I, I wanna just encompass the whole thing, the whole kid and caboodle, like they said here in the United States. Let us go get the peoples. It's all about the people. No matter their background, <laughs> no matter their cultures, they need yes. to be saved and know Jesus. Yes. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. May the Gulo bless every single one of y'all that are listening to us. May God anoint this and send you in the way he, you should go. For everybody's going to give at their own measure. May God lead you in understanding what your measure is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.